To summarize, this gentleman is a 72-year-old factory worker with a former history of smoking, having quit about 30 years ago, um, who presented with a lung mass. Uh, at the same time, was also have, uh, found to have lymph node involvement and a pleural effusion, uh, which qualified him for a diagnosis of stage four disease. And on biopsies of the lung mass and the lymph nodes, this returned positive for large cell carcinoma, which is a subtype of non-small cell lung cancer. That's non-squamous. And molecular testing only for EGFR and ALK was performed, which also returned negative or unremarkable for an actionable driver. The um, definition of driver negative or PAD negative, it's really a moving target, and that's evolved a lot over the years. In the late 90s, the slice of the pie that was unknown was about 75%, um, and we only knew about KRAS. Um, and until about two years ago, the slice of the pie that was unknown, um, the incidence uh, or the frequency went down to about 33%, so one out of three patients. But with the advances in next generation sequencing and now plasma-based genotyping, um, at least in our hands, the unknown slice of the pie is about 15% with our internal assay, which is a next generation sequencing assay, similar to the commercial assays that are out there like Foundation One from Foundation Medicine. Um, and so beyond EGFR and ALK, which make up in aggregate in a Caucasian population of maybe about 20% of cases, um, the other events that fill up the rest of the pie include uh, ROS1 and RET rearrangements, BRAF V600E mutations, met exon 14 skipping alterations, HER2 mutations, PIK3CA. So there's really a host of other uh, potentially targetable events that either have therapies that are in the NCCN guidelines, uh, in the table of emerging agents, um, or approved for uh, other indications that we're able to get uh, for lung cancer patients in the clinic. And beyond that, obviously clinical trial therapy. One important concept to lead with is the fact that EGFR and ALK are not the be-all, end-all of actionable drivers in non-small cell lung cancer. Even in patients who are former smokers, which was the case with Robert, there are other potentially actionable events that are missed on molecular diagnostic testing if it's restricted to EGFR and ALK. So my first recommendation for this case is to send his tumor for a more comprehensive test like next generation sequencing, which may pick up other events like met exon 14 alterations, BRAF V600E, other recurrent gene rearrangements for which targeted therapies have been prospectively tested. But considering that we've done that for this gentleman already and the comprehensive report comes back negative for any actionable alterations, um, then things to consider for him would either be chemotherapy or immune therapy. Um, and for chemotherapy, obviously, we know that the standard of care is a platinum doublet, um, with or without an anti-antigenic agent. And of note, Robert had a non-squamous tumor. Um, so the use of bevacizumab is something to consider for him. Um, but also, we have recent data showing that patients whose tumors are positive for PDL1, meaning 50% or greater, um, they do better if they receive an immune checkpoint inhibitor in the first line setting. Uh, and this is specifically pembrolizumab. The decision as to what therapy to give uh, a patient with advanced non-small cell lung cancer in the first line setting is very complicated. Um, I don't personally go by somebody's age as a number. Um, I think that performance status, status is a better predictor of how they're gonna do with um, systemic therapy. Um, beyond that, of course, you consider things like organ function, kidney, um, liver function, um, and just their general fitness. So basic questions I ask patients are whether or not they're able to take care of themselves at home, make a sandwich, shower, walk around the house. And those are um, sort of rudimentary elements that we would require before seeing that someone's fit for therapy. Um, and then the factors that I mentioned earlier in terms of diagnostics, of course, um, the absence of an actionable mutation and also whether or not the tumor stains positive for PDL1.